The net zero fallacy means we have some of the world's most expensive energy. Cost per kilowatt hour in the UK is 44 cents, in the United States 17 cents, in China 8 cents, and in India again 8 cents per kilowatt hour. At the heart of Britain's energy infrastructure is a fundamental untruth. The untruth is that net zero is affordably achievable. It is not. Net zero, the push towards it, the budgets towards it, is making us cold and poor. And the Prime Minister has recognised that it could get worse without today's announcement of the continuation of old gas power stations as well as the building of new ones as a means of preventing blackouts. This news is certainly welcome, and I'm pleased to see he accepts the unreliability of renewable energy and how it increases the risk of blackouts, mainly because the sun doesn't shine enough in Britain and there's plenty of time when the wind doesn't blow either, often when demand is at its highest. He's right to point out that the Labour Party's plans to decarbonise the grid by 2030 are a fantasy, which really would expose us to the real prospect of blackouts. But as Ross Clark in The Spectator today has pointed out, this plan isn't much better. Under the Conservatives, the grid is to be decarbonised by 2035, a mere five years later than Labour's fancy plan. So if we need gas power stations to meet the failure of supply from renewable energy now and in six years' time, what makes it any different in 11 years' time? The answer is very little. We may have developed some energy storage technology or some carbon capture, but the point is that he is effectively proposing continuing and building new gas power stations only for them to be out of use in a few years. Unless the Prime Minister, or Sir Keir Starmer for that matter, has plans for Britain to be moved to Iceland during the summer, when the sun always shines, and the equator during the winter, whilst also ensuring that it's always windy, the grid decarbonising strategy cannot work at an affordable price. We will always need a reliable form of energy, such as gas, to shield us from these moments where renewables fail. And even before decarbonisation, when we're willing to use the gas power stations, there's another fundamental untruth at hand. This stop-start system makes gas more expensive. If you run gas power stations the whole time, they are cheaper and more efficient. The intermittency, when you have renewables coming in and out, makes the cost higher because they have to get up to full speed and then be wound back down again. And this is the hidden subsidy of renewables that underpins that 44 cents a kilowatt hour compared to 17 in the United States. These operating costs are inevitably passed on to you. So it's only when this net zero untruth is fully recognised by our leaders that we will be able to ensure British people have cheap energy. And it's interesting, indeed it's rare for our non-democratic institutions, the quangos, regulators, expert or com committees, to engage in thought that breaks with consensus of bureaucratic orthodoxy. So when it does happen, it's worth listening to. That's why it's so important and interesting that Ofgem, the energy regulator, has affirmed what we knew to be true, that net zero hits the poorest in society in the hardest, because they spend more of their disposable income on energy than the richest in society. What we need is a sensible energy policy that prioritises cheap energy for you, and industrialisation as well. We therefore need indefinitely to postpone the net zero 2050 pledge until other countries catch up. Otherwise, Britain will be fastened to a cold and poor future. As ever, let me know your thoughts, mailmog at gbnews.com. And I'm very pleased to be joined now by a friend of the programme, Senior Meteorologist for the British Weather Service, Jim Dale. Jim, thank you for coming in. Good evening. Um, renewables are always going to need backup supply, aren't they? And this is where the cost comes in that is making us so uncompetitive as a country. I think at this, this moment it is fair to say that there needs to be a backup because we're not there. We're in transition zone. Um, what you just... Uh, given the audience is, to me, is a vault face uh, from the Conservative Party. That's what's happened today. Let's make that absolutely clear. And you wonder why, and you wonder why, and you think to yourself, well, I think to myself, it's election year, and there needs to be votes captured from another party called the Reform Party, because what you've just actually said, Jacob, is more or less what reforms say as well. And I wonder why. I wonder why that might be the case, that the fact that you've just lost a, a, an MP to reform, and, and now we're sitting here a day later, and we're, we're suddenly advocating a Reform UK Party um, uh, proposition. Because the current policy isn't working. Well, we're and not there yet. It's making this country poor. I'll tell you what's making the country poor. 
You, 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 your constituency is in Somerset, isn't it? That's right. Okay. Have you seen the Somerset levels of late? Well, I don't cover well, Somerset levels okay. as no, it you happens. Don't, but it's they're, next they're door to you. Yeah, of I'm, 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 they're under water. The, but, that's, but that's at least in part because the Environment Agency refused to dredge. The failure to dredge in the Somerset levels led to the flooding 10 years ago. We used to be able to control uh, the levels, and that was done from the 18th century. Dutch drainage engineers were brought over, and the Somerset levels did not flood excessively because of the um, drains that were put in. Let me and then the Environment Agency, as part of this green obsession, stopped dredging, and then it flooded. Lo and behold, what would you expect? Well, let me give you another one. If you think that dredging is the answer, maybe it's a part answer, that, that's fair enough, but it's been raining heavily and people are complaining. Farmers are losing their crops. Farmers can't get out into the livestock. But let's just go a little bit broader than that. We shouldn't just look at ourselves as an island in the, in the middle of the, the Atlantic or on the edge of the Atlantic. We should look globally at what's going on. Sea temperatures at their highest level ever Particularly the, the Atlantic. No, particularly the Atlantic. Let me make yeah. the point. Particularly the Atlantic. Um, global temperatures, global air temperatures, rising yes. year on year for the last and, eight, nine and, years and world, in a row. I mean, the world have you not seen these the world, graphs? Hasn't, the world hasn't ended, and we're only 1% but, of emissions. But, but, what we do makes no difference. If you and I stop breathing, it wouldn't make a blind bit of difference to global emissions. We we've shut down the whole UK economy, to you, it wouldn't help. It's not a case of, of turning a switch and it all happens tomorrow. We all know that. We know that it's common sense to say it's going to take the transition. We're slow. Nobody else we've is doing slow. it. Oh, they, but they are. But they oh, are. Well, the European Union is. Well, look, but, but the United States if, isn't. If we're and talking its about economy greening, has I, grown. China isn't. India isn't. China the is. Growing China economies. is. India is. It's They're adding, trying. It, Even though they put emissions out more than right. we do, they do. Their that, emissions are, and their emissions are growing. And their economy is growing and their people are getting richer Jake, and I want the question. standard of living for my yeah. constituents do you, do you, to rise. Do you believe that, that man-made climate change exists? That's oh, a, that's a, I, what I'm talking about is how you respond to it. Not whether, no, I'm not I, trying I, to argue I, I, about whether it exists or not. So that's a completely I, I, different I, I, question. No, well, the, the point to be made is it's not because it's linked to fossil fuels. I'm saying there's no point in doing anything about it because the rest of the world isn't and we're just making the British people poor and having no so effect. So is, is this now Conservative Party policy? That's what I'm advocating. That's I what you're advocating. Is that, what, my... is that what Mr Sunak well, is? I'm glad to say he has rolled back on um, the commitment to get rid of petrol cars. I want petrol cars. I want my constituents to be free to decide on their choice what type of car but they the, buy. But there is still we a, see a the... choice going forward. As I said to you, it's an evolution, not a revolution. We can't revo revolutionise simply because we haven't got the infrastructure there yet. But you will find, mm. in, by, in 10 years' time, you will find that gas power stations, for example, as you've, you've mentioned, um, the use of those will be down to around about 10%. The rest will be coming from renewables. We should use them as long as they're the cheapest form of energy. They should be a market solution. You no. shouldn't have these huge extra costs, 44 they, they cents to the them. UK for a kilowatt hour they all against point. 8 cents in China. They How all, can we ever compete? The old point in moving in that direction is to stop and, and, and mitigate climate change, which will be... And if you don't but think we're it's not a disaster, going to do it. You, need, you need to look at some of the we're, stuff that I look at. In we're the, just in not going to do world. it. Well, what, so you're giving up? Is that, is that the answer? Let's, the rest the of the world, party the rest giving of, up praying to God, the, is it? The rest of the world isn't doing it. We are 1%. What we do makes not a blind bit of difference. So even if it were possible to do what you're saying, we're not going to do it on our own. Why should my constituents be made... we should do. Well, hold on, let me we finish. Should be. Why should my constituents be made poor for something that won't it's, improve the world. They're going to be made a lot poorer when they're, they're up to their arms in, 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 in water. But they're and not going or, to be up to their arms in when water. You see, when you see extreme temperatures that is, we've seen in the last couple of years affecting... No, I'll tell you what... More deaths come from cold, as even the United Nations body says, from cold than from heat. Let me tell you that what's scaremongering is that, that word blackout, OK? How many blackouts have we had in the last... 40 years. When I was briefly Secretary of State for Energy, I was very worried about blackouts. If we hadn't been what lucky if... with a very mild winter, we could have had blackouts so in 2022, 2023. So we're governed by the weather. That's absolutely the case. We are governed by the and weather. We but we could... haven't seen any. And that we... word has been inserted simply as a scare tactic to say, you, you've got no, to roll back from no. this because otherwise you're going to be in blackouts, you're going to be in trouble, you're going to be poorer. The government is so worried thing. about blackouts that it's trying to persuade people to have smart meters so they get asked to switch their equipment off.
to stop us blacking out. We're at our lowest usage of electricity since 1974 when we did have blackouts. So what we have to do is, is produce more energy. Because I think under, under, and under, cheap energy. under PM we should be, Trust... We should you, be using coal as well. Were, were, you, oh, were you not in favour of more offshore wind farms? Were you, was that the case? I think I'm you happy were. with more, but I'm also in favour of fracking. Why are we going back from that? I want, I want fracking to get yeah, cheap yeah, sources well, of domestic that's, gas. That's a slightly different issue, I want, and it's got... I want to make my constituents better off and raise their standard of living. I don't want unless to make them cold Unless and they've poor. got that in the back garden, which Thank they won't you. be happy with. <laughs> they get a lot of money from it. Thank you very much, Jim.